everyone welcome back to my channel my name is JC I'm going to be starting medical school at the University of Toronto this fall today we're going to be talking about how to apply to medical school in Canada specifically Ontario This video will be focused on domestic applicants, so that is individuals who are Canadian citizens or Canadian permanent residents. Last year at this exact same time I was prepping my application, I remember how stressful all of that was, so I hope this is extremely helpful and informative for you. First, we're going to start at high school. One of the major questions I got when I worked as a student ambassador was what program should I do in undergrad to get into medical school? and to what else do I have to do in high school that will prepare me for that process. The answer to the first question is there is no perfect program to get into med school in Canada. And once you do the prerequisites for the school that you're interested in, then you can apply. That means you don't have to do biology or chemistry. You could do a different degree such as arts, history, business, and still apply to medical school. Three tips for individuals who are in high school and are thinking of doing medical school. The first tip is to keep up your grades. So in Canada, you can't go to med school straight out from high school. You have to do an undergraduate degree. So this means you need to get into an undergraduate degree. Doing well in high school will allow you to apply to undergrad and start whatever program that you want. The second tip I have is to enjoy yourself. Figure out what extracurriculars you like and explore your interests. This will make it easier to start doing extracurriculars once you're in undergrad that you actually enjoy. And the last tip I have is to be careful of applying to co-op programs. Some medical schools require you to be full-time throughout your studies and co-op is a different sequence than usual. So some med schools don't allow students who actually did co-op to apply. Usually if you do enter a program that has co-op, you can talk to an advisor at your university and they'll be able to tell you how to work around your co-op and still be able to apply to medical school. Now that you're done high school and you're in university, we can talk about what happens from there. So firstly, the timeline for applying to medical school is approximately one year before you actually start. To apply to medical school in Ontario, it's through one application portal on a website called OMSAS, which is the Ontario application system. It opens in July and it closes in October, on October 1st of that same year. Once you submit your application on October 1st or before October 1st, you wait until the next year in January to March for interview invites. So once you do get your interview, you do your interview, then you get to know if you've got an offer to any of the schools you interviewed at in May of that year. And then that same year, you will attend medical school in the fall. That is quite a lengthy process. So students should start thinking about if they wanna apply a year or two before. So now that we've talked about the timeline of your application, let's talk about the application itself. So your application to medical school in Ontario has seven main components. The first one is the prerequisite courses that you need. This is different for each school, so we'll talk about them specifically. The second part of your application is your GPA. All the schools in Ontario look at your GPA. Some of them weight them differently, so we'll also talk about the different equations for those. Thirdly, as part of your application, you have your MCAT. Some schools actually don't require the MCAT, whereas some schools do. The fourth part of your application is your autobiographical sketch. This includes whatever research you've done, extracurriculars, any jobs that you've had, employment, or anything in that realm, any interests or hobbies that you hold. The fifth part of your application are the references. For OMSAS in Ontario, it requires three different references, which is sent to all the schools that you apply for. This is great because you don't have to get specific references for every single school. They will be sent to all the schools that you apply for in Ontario. The sixth part of your medical school application are the supplemental essays. Some schools do not require supplemental essays whereas some schools do and the last part of your medical school application is your CASPER test. Again just like the essays as well as the MCAT some schools use CASPER some schools don't. Now that we've looked at a brief overview in terms of the entire application process let's look at each school individually. The first school I will talk about is the University of Ottawa. The medical school at U Ottawa is first unique because it has two streams. It has an English as well as a French stream. If you do speak French, French is your first language and you would like to study medicine in French, that is something that is unique to a school in Ontario. You can apply after 
your second year of university after doing two full years of courses so you don't have to wait until you're in your third year and you're going to graduate you can actually apply to graduate early and finish your undergraduate degree in three years and then start medical school right after that for the prerequisites you Ottawa does have specific prerequisites that you have to do they include two courses in humanities slash social science, two courses in biology or physiology, one course in chemistry, one course in organic chemistry, one course in biochemistry, one course in biostatistics, and lastly, a lab component, which has to be two courses. One thing to note is that U Ottawa is one of the schools with a full course load requirement, so take that into consideration when you're thinking about applying. For the GPA requirement for U Ottawa, they have a minimum GPA of 3.0 out of four but an average GPA of 3.93 so that average is way above the minimum although most of the schools do post minimums these are usually not representative of the actual class that enters there are a few outliers but usually for a good shot your GPA should be around the average U Ottawa has a specific weighted GPA calculation they count first year as times one, second year times two, third year times three. So take that into consideration, it is a weighted GPA, so it won't be the exact same GPA that you get from your school at the end of the year. The second unique thing about the University of Ottawa's medical school is that they do not require the MCAT. So this might be beneficial if you have good grades and you haven't done your MCAT yet, you may want to apply to the University of Ottawa before you've done your MCAT or if that's your preferred school. Like all the other schools, you still have to submit your extracurriculars in the form of your autobiographical sketch. You will also still have to submit your three references, but there are no supplemental essays. So you don't need to write any other essays other than submitting your application through OMSAS to apply to U Ottawa. And lastly, there is a CASPER requirement. CASPER is a test that you take after you've applied. It is scenario based and it looks at how you're going to respond to different types of scenarios. It's kind of like a personality test and I will do a whole separate video on Casper because I did have to do it and it's something that usually there's not a lot of information about and it's not really talked about. The second school we will discuss is McMaster University. Some unique things about that school is that they have a three-year program. So the rest of the medical schools in Ontario, you graduate as an MD after four years, but at McMaster, it is three years. McMaster has no specific prerequisite courses, so you don't have to do any specific biology, biochemistry, anything like that to apply and you can apply any time after you've accumulated two years of credits. Likewise, McMaster does not have a full low GPA requirement, so you do not have to do a full course load throughout your undergraduate degree to apply. In terms of the GPA that you need, for McMaster, the minimum GPA is 3.0, but the average GPA for the entering class is 3.87. They do look at MCAT, but they only look at the CARS section. CARS stands for Critical Analysis and Reasoning Skills. You read a certain passage and you answer questions based on that passage. So that's something to note that you have to be really strong in if you would like to attend McMaster University. The mean CARS score for the entry class of 2017 was 129 and that is the 95th percentile so you do really have to ensure that your car score is really up there in terms of percentiles if you want to have a great shot at applying to McMaster University. Like the other schools you still need to submit your autobiographical sketch as well as your three references. There are no supplemental essays to apply to McMaster and like you Ottawa Casper is required. And the third school we're going to talk about is Queen's University. For Queen's University, there are no specific prereq courses, so you don't have to do any specific class to apply. And you can apply after your second year of university, so you can apply to end right after your third year and then start medical school. Something unique about Queen's is their GPA requirements. So they have two GPAs that they look at. Firstly, they look at your overall CGPA, and secondly, they look at your most recent two full-time years. So this might be extremely advantageous if you didn't do well in first year and in second and third year, you did extremely well on a full-time course schedule. You can apply and they will look at your GPA for the two years only 
and they will disregard your first year that you didn't do as well. Unfortunately, Queen's does not publish their minimum GPA that you should apply with and they also don't publish their mean GPA for their incoming classes. Queen's does require the MCAT and they don't take out any sections. They look at your full MCAT score, but they do not require any essays and they don't require CASPER tests. So that's something to note. The next school we're going to be talking about is the University of Toronto, which is actually the school I'll be attending medical school at in August. For the prerequisites for the University of Toronto, you need to do two full-time years in a life science class as well as one full-time course equivalent in any social science, humanities course, or language course. The University of Toronto uses a weighted GPA formula that is kind of unique. Once you study full-time throughout your undergrad, you're eligible for their weighted GPA. For every full year that you've studied, they take out one full course grade or two single semester grades. But you have to have completed a minimum of three years, so you can apply with this weighted formula once you finish third year or you finish fourth year and already graduated. So personally for me, I applied after my third year. I was able to drop my lowest six course grades and that's a huge boost if you didn't do well in a couple courses but you still did full time. The minimum GPA to apply from undergrad is a 3.6. The minimum competitive GPA is a 3.8. The average GPA for the entering class of 2018 was a 3.96. Like the other schools, the University of Toronto does look at your extracurriculars and employment in your abstract. They also look at the references you sent but something to note is that they do have supplemental essays. Every year the supplemental essays change but the University of Toronto posts four different questions that you have to answer as well as some additional supplemental essays that you can write if you are eligible. There are two streams that you can also apply through. One is the Black Student Application Program, which I applied through. For the BSAT program, there is no minimum quota. They don't drop the minimum GPA that you need or any of the other requirements, but you do have to submit a 250 word essay highlighting why you've chosen to apply through this stream and people of color will be reviewing your application. Another stream that you can apply through if you are eligible is the Indigenous Student Application Program. Similar to BSAP, you also have to write a 250 word paragraph explaining your connectedness to your community and or your intent for future community involvement. You must also submit your proof of Aboriginal ancestry as well as self-declared Aboriginal status on your OMSAS application. So the next school in Ontario is Western University. There are no prerequisite courses specifically to apply to Western, so you don't need to do any specific classes in undergrad, but you cannot apply after your second year in terms of its GPA requirements. Western University looks at your best two full-time years. This is great if you didn't do well in one year or another and you did full-time. Your GPA is only consisted of your best two years. The minimum GPA for the best two years is a 3.7 but something that's unique about Western University is that there are two application streams. The general application stream and the Southwestern Ontario stream for students who attended all years of high school at a high school specified in Southern Ontario. The overall mean GPA for the class of 2020 was a 3.92. So although the minimum GPA is a 3.7, something closer to a 3.9 would be more competitive. Like the other schools, you still have to submit your three references as well as your autobiographical sketch. In terms of MCAT, Western does still look at your MCAT. For general applicants, the minimum MCAT score for the biology section is a 126. The minimum MCAT score for the chem physics section is a 127 and the minimum score for the car section is also 127. But if you're applying as a Southwestern Ontario applicant, then these scores are a bit lower. The minimum score for the biology section is a 125. For the chem physics section, it's also 125. And for the car section, it is also 125. Similar to the University of Toronto, if you apply to Western, there are also supplemental essays that you do have to do, but you do not have to write the CASPER test. And the last school in Ontario that you can apply to is the Northern Ontario School of Medicine. In terms of prerequisites, 
Northern Ontario School of Medicine does not have any specific prerequisites, but they do have general ones. If you did a major in science, you're expected to have two full course equivalents in some arts, social science, or humanities type courses. On the other hand, if you're an applicant who did arts, humanities, or social sciences, you're expected to have completed at least two full year science courses. The minimum GPA to apply to the Northern Ontario School of Medicine is a 3.0, but the average GPA for the class entering in 2019 was 3.8. Six, and graduates receive an extra 0.2 on their GPA when they apply. Again, like the other schools, you still need that autobiographical sketch as well as the three references, but the MCAT is not required. So just like the University of Ottawa, the Northern Ontario School of Medicine does not require you to do the MCAT, so you don't need that to apply. Similar to Western as well as Toronto, there is a supplemental essay component to your application. You have to answer four specific questions, which I believe changes every year, as well as expanding on a couple of the activities that you put into your autobiographical sketch. And lastly, you do not have to write the CASPER to apply to the Northern Ontario School of Medicine. If you apply to NOSM, you must have lived in rural Northern Ontario or in some other rural part of Canada, have an interest in continuing to live in Northern Ontario or another rural underserved part of Canada and or an interest in working in underserved populations in general. If you are Indigenous, apply to the Indigenous application stream. You need to submit an essay on why you want to become a candidate for that stream, about your cultural and personal background, and any other details that you'd like to add. Likewise, you must submit a letter of recommendation from a community or organization affiliation, and you need to submit proof of your Indigenous ancestry. So that was a run through on each school in Ontario. If you're confused about anything or there's an exception that might apply to you, I would definitely recommend emailing the school directly. Although there is a really high GPA cutoff or a really high GPA average in Ontario, there are other ways to strengthen your application. So don't forget about your MCAT score can really make your application stronger at schools that require the MCAT or your personal essays can really bring out your application if you are applying to a school that also has those. So really ensure that you understand what your strengths are and you apply to the schools that fit those strengths. Thank you guys so much for watching the video if you got this far. If you like this content, please give it a thumbs up. Comment if you have any other video suggestions that you'd like me to do. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one.